The information in this module is accurate and complete to the best of our knowledge. All recommendations are made without guarantee on the part of the author or the sponsoring institutions. The author and the sponsoring institutions disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. Welcome to the Genome Assembly Lecture. As we mentioned in the last lecture, next generation sequencing data is a lot cheaper and has a huge output, but it still has one obvious limitation compared to the Sanger standard. Specifically, the short reads are very short. Common output of NGS technology is still at about 150 base pairs per read, and to produce a genome, NGS data requires computer-intensive assembly. In this lecture, we will review sequence alignment and assembly methods used in genome projects. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to contrast global and local alignments, describe dot matrix and dynamic programming methods of alignment, describe the dynamic programming methods of alignment, describe the word methods of alignment, identify the difference between pairwise and multiple alignments. Understand the difference of alignment of NGS and multiple alignment. Describe the principle of greedy algorithms, the overlap layout consensus models, and how the Bruin graphs assemblies work. Identify what is the advantages of small and large KMER size. Recall that genome assembly refers to the process of taking a large number of short DNA sequences and putting them back together to create a representation of the original chromosomes. It requires a sequence alignment. It's a way of arranging sequences of DNA, RNA, or protein to identify regions of similarity that may be a consequence of functional, structural, or evolutionary relationship between the sequences. We will start with alignment methods and will contrast them with the assembly methods for the genome data. Pairwise sequence alignment methods are used to find the best matching piecewise or local or global alignments of two query sequences. Pairwise alignments can only be used between two sequences. Global alignment forces the alignment to span the entire length of all query sequences, while the local alignment identifies regions of similarity within long sequences that are often widely divergent overall. The three primary methods of producing pairwise alignments are dot matrix models, dynamic programming, and word methods. All three have difficulty with highly repetitive sequences especially where the number of repetitions differs in two sequences to be aligned. To construct a dot matrix plot, the two sequences are written along the top row and leftmost column of the two-dimensional matrix, and a dot is placed at any point where the characters in the appropriate columns match. The dot plot of very closely related sequences will appear as a single line along the matrix main diagonal. This method is qualitatively and conceptually very simple, but it is time-consuming to analyze sequences on a large scale, such as those in genome projects. The dynamic programming method is used to find an optimal alignment giving a particular scoring function. For example, in aligning sequences of the same gene from different species. This function often computed from likelihood of mutations in different positions. Some mutations changes are more likely than others. So as you can see, identifying a good scoring function is often an empirical rather than a theoretical matter. Protein alignments use a substitution matrix to assign scores to amino acid matches or mismatches, and a gap penalty for a matching an amino acid in one sequence to a gap in another. 
DNA and RNA alignments may use a scoring matrix, but in practice, often simply assign a positive match score, a negative mismatch score, and a negative gap penalty. Due to its complexity, this approach has very limited use in the genome assembly. Finally, word methods, also known as K-tuple methods, are not guaranteed to find an optimal alignment solution, but they are significantly more efficient than dynamic programming. These methods first identify a series of short, non-overlapping sequences, or words, in the query sequence that are then matched to the candidate database sequences. So, in essence, not the entire sequences are aligned. The sequences are cut into shorter words that can be more easily identified for a match. Then, when related sequences are retrieved, they are aligned to evaluate the percentage of identity and sorted. Word methods are especially useful in large-scale database searches, for example, in NCBI BLAST, where it is understood that a large proportion of the candidate sequences will have essentially no significant matches with any query sequences. As we will see, this particular approach has its implication in NGS genome assembly as well. The sequencing output of the NGS project consists of many small sequences. How do we align them together to make a consensus? In theory, you can think of multiple sequence alignments as an extension of pairwise alignment to align all the sequences in a given set. Dynamic programming is theoretically applicable to any number of sequences, however, because it is computationally extensive, is not so useful. Progressive, hierarchical, or tree methods generate multiple sequence alignments by first aligning the most similar sequences and then adding successfully less related sequences or groups to the alignment until the entire query set has been incorporated into the solution. Iterative methods optimize an objective function based on a selected alignment scoring method by assigning an initial global alignment and then realigning sequence subsets. Shouldn't genome alignment be just a multiple sequence alignment in the end? It turns out that it is not possible to do. The problem is that aligning genome-wide data is different from pairwise and multiple sequence alignments because not all sequences are expected to overlap. We must first take millions and millions of short reads and assemble them into contigs. Then, we join contigs using paired ed sequences or made pairs into scaffolds. A number of different algorithms have been developed to address these problems. We will now concentrate on the methods that create contigs out of datasets of short single reads. The most basic assembler is called the greedy algorithm. This is used in FRAP and Tigger assemble algorithms. The peculiarity of this approach is that the greedy assembler always makes the choice with the greatest immediate benefit. The greedy algorithms apply one basic operation. Given any read or contig, add one more read or contig. Recall, this is very similar to the algorithm that they were used in search for the overlapping clones in the restriction maps. This basic operation is repeated over and over again until no more operations are possible. Either you run out of reads or you ran out of reads that can be assembled into a contact. Each operation uses the next highest scoring overlap to make the next join. Dynamic programming can be applied here to better the results. This is a very good approach. However, it is very unrealistic to use it given the sheer number of data coming from a sequencer. The number of combinations between the reads is too great. And this approach would make up too much computational time to be considered for the NGS sequence genomes. 
a more sensible alternative used in early assemblers such as in Human Genome Project is so-called Overlap Layout Assembly or OLS. The Overlap Layout Consensus Assembler starts by identifying all pairs of reads that overlap su sufficiently well. Then it organizes them into a graph containing a node for every read and an edge between any pair of reads that overlap with each other. This assembly was used in the Celera assembler in HTP. The problem with this assembly was that the sequencing mistakes will result in many misaligned reads and leave some disjoint sequences. The Brune graph assemblers model the relationship between exact substrings of length k extracted from the input reads. First, you process your sequencing reads by breaking them into segments of equal length. These are called k-mers. Then you evaluate all the possible k-mers and discard all the non-unique ones. Then you align the remaining k-mers so they overlap by exactly k minus two sides, one at the beginning and one at the end, forming a perfect ladder as seen in the upper right corner. Note that this alignment is used in the three leading software packages, Sobdinova 2, AllPath, and Velvet. The question is, what is the optimal KMER size? The choice of the KMER size has many different effects on the sequence assembly. Understanding the need to choose a size that creates a balance of the effects. Shorter KMERs will increase the chances of overlap, so more data can be used, but the long range information is then lost, and the number of possibilities in the assembly increases. At the same time, if we choose the KMERs that are too long, there is a risk of too many disjoint unique KMERs that have no overlaps. These may be aligned to any others either due to the errors or to presence of heterozygotes. So choosing KMERs that are too long will decrease the amount of data used in the alignment. The Brun graph assembly works very well because reducing fragment sequences to KMERs avoids problems with misaligning errors. Using only one KMER of the same sequence reduces amount of data and makes assembly very fast. It does generate specific sets of errors that need to be resolved. Here you can see just a subset of these errors and most of them can be resolved using longer reads. Errors are usually detected because of the increased coverage of the genomes. Often 100x is used to make sure errors are detected. In cases of repeats, a comparison of depth coverage can indicate their presence, or alternatively, mate pairs are helpful to identify these as they will span for longer distances. Overall, error correction approaches used both before and during the assembly are crucial for achieving high quality assemblies. An alternative method of growing interest is the string graph assembly. This does not require division of reads into KMERs, but requires FATS algorithms for computation of suffix prefix matches between all pairs of reads. As you can see from the figure, this approach starts by matching all similar sequences like the overlap layout consensus, but then assembles it in a string graph similarly to the one built by the Brune approach. We have used string assembler Fermi and compared them to the De Bruyne assemblers in our own research. And it seems that De Bruyne assemblers may be performing better with heterozygous data, while string graph is best for homozygous genomes because it uses full lengths of the sequencing fragments and therefore will maximize the dataset information included in the assembly. Here are some review questions for this lecture.
This concludes the lecture on genome assembly. We will be seeing the next lesson where we will study the topic of quality of genome assembly.